whole Vietnam will die because of this. Hi, welcome back. Come take a seat. Today we're going to be talking about a scary story. Very scary. Super spooky. A supernatural story. A creepy pasta, if you will, of a military nature. The name of the creepy pasta that we're going to be talking about today is called Agent Indigo. Agent Indigo is a story that takes place in Vietnam at a northern Vietnamese research facility, and it's an interesting story about a chemical. But anyway, let's get right into it. August 12th, 1962. The American planes overhead have just finished their daily defilation routes. The air is thick with herbicide. I write this through a gas mask. Our soldiers are suffocating in this toxic environment. We're simply outnumbered in the unfortunate location of our outpost. Luckily, our food supplies remain hidden from aerial view, and we can only hope that none of the chemical finds it, lest we all starve. The only detail keeping me from leaving this wasteland is the generous grant given to us by honorable Lao Dong officials, a sum of over 10 billion dong. <laughs> dong. I'm Lieutenant Dong. Dong. This is enough for us to continue our research into creating an antidote for the American herbicide, Agent Orange. Which if you don't know, Agent Orange was a herbicide that was designed during Vietnam that was utilized to spread all over the foliage to kind of disintegrate the foliage so that way there was less concealment for the Viet Cong because they were obviously hiding in the jungle and this made it easier for us to target them with bombing runs or artillery or, you know, call for fire and things of that nature. So that's what they're talking about when they're talking about Agent Orange. The successful creation creation of an herbal exfoliant would put an end to the mindless extermination of our crops and provide our citizens and soldiers with sufficient rations. This could be the chance the glorious state of North Vietnam is looking for. Our chemists are extracting samples from the affected plants as I write. Hopefully we will have the exact compound used in producing the diabolical substance by the end of the week. August 15th, 1962. We have at last made essential progress towards our goal. After three grueling days of research, we have narrowed the possible chemical compounds used in Agent Orange to the following 24D slash 245 TAC T isocetyl ester. I don't even know what, what that means. What, what, what? Isocetyl. Yep. Isocetyl. 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 triangle, which may include traces of 2378 TAC T C D D. I don't know what that is. If such is the case, it is clear that our American enemy is constructing a mass genocide of epic proportions. Lao Dong has cleared the reverse engineering of the herbicide. Effective September 1st. We await this day with bated breath. August August 16th, 1962. It has been confirmed that Agent Orange contains dioxin, which means it can now be officially considered a bioweapon. However, our suspicions as to why the chemical is present have been disproven. Having salvaged the wreckage of an American plane, we now see that the orange paint, its namesake, used on the barrel has seeped into the solution. This is both disturbing and exciting news. It means that all people who have come into contact with the herbicide are prone to extremely painful ailments, including rashes, blisters, and even cancer of the lungs and prostate. This explains the disease rate through our soldiers. However, it means that our enemies are much more careless than we originally thought. We are preparing formulas for the impending project and it cannot come soon enough. Addendum. Some of the soldiers have entirely lost the skins on their legs and arms. The situation is becoming increasingly dangerous. September cannot arrive soon enough. Sounds like that's a blister agent almost. Kind of like mustard gas from World War One. Those were definitely made illegal. Yeah, it's definitely against the Geneva Convention. Geneva to use, Convention. Yeah, chemical weapons. You're not supposed to do it, but a lot of people are like... That's a big no-no, yeah. but then money and government and stuff. The formulas are complete. We look forward to the physical manifestation of the chemical. The air outside has become so thick with defoliant that we must wear full body hazard suits and gas masks whenever we walk outside. The soldiers that have remained at the site have been inside for protection. One positive that I can report, our food supply is still intact and flourishing. High hopes are present among the entire research staff. We've got high hopes. Everything's fine here, even though you can't go outside without getting blistering <clears throat> agents all over your skin and your skin falling off. Life is hell, but things are great. This is fine. August 29th, 1962. This morning, some of the spray from an overhead plane leaked into the bunker, causing a severe allergic reaction in one of the hospitalized soldiers. He is currently suffering from anaphylactic shock and is only serving to prove that the experiment must be conducted as soon as possible. I fear for our safety, as long as this hateful war continues. August 31st, 1962. We've decided to move our entire sample supply of crops indoors in preparation for the experiment. The plants in question include varieties of wheat, corn, groundnut, indigo, and wild rice, all salvaged from our herbicide proof greenhouse. We plan to remain indoors for the majority of the chemical tests so as to prevent any excess agent from leaking into the base. Our sustainable food crop cannot be moved, unfortunately, and we hope to send one volunteer each day to collect enough for the staff and soldiers. We simply cannot afford another casualty. Last we checked, the plot is herbicide free, so we have relatively high spirits 
as we enter into the month-long tests of our new chemical, which we have decided to call Agent Indigo. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> as a protest to the rainbow herbicides employed by the American Army. Why are they rainbow herbicides? They probably make a lot of them, and there's also a lot of colors of the rainbow, so you're never going to run out of names. Anyway, September 1st, 1962, day one in the bunker. Our staff is concocting a batch of Agent Indigo right next to me as I write. It looks every bit as exciting as I had hoped. Our first food run was conducted today and Fan, our youngest associate, was successful. We now have enough wheat germ and flour to make a healthy bread meal for our entire staff. Oh, nice. Bread. Good bread. Bread. Just like Frodo and Sam. Remember where the bread? Bread. September 2nd, 1962, day two in the bunker. The first vial of indigo is ready for testing. We only have a limited supply of lab mice, so hopefully they reproduce quickly. Observations of initial tests on mice. Control shows no effect. Sample one shows mild skin irritation, but no other adverse side effects. Sample two shows no effect. Sample three shows minor hair loss on applied area. Plants, control dies shortly after exposure to orange. Sample one with only indigo shows orange resistance on all crops. Sample two with indigo and sugar solution shows orange resistance on all crops except ground nut. What's ground nut? Nuts that come from the ground. I think a peanut's a ground nut. Yeah, so then it would be anything that's like peanuts that grows like out of the ground. That's a ground okay. nut. That makes sense. I feel like I should just Google this instead of saying false information. We're all learning lots of things. A productive day. Overall, we are trying to eliminate all possible side effects so that we do not result in another bioweapon. September 3rd, 1962, day three. We've created a new sample that will hopefully eliminate the hair loss and skin irritation. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample one shows no effect. Sample two acquires bloodshot eyes and minor irritation. Sample 3 shows minor irritation. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on only indigo crops. Sample 2 shows resistance on only indigo crops. It seems there is more work to do. September 4th, 1962, day 4. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows no effect. Sample 2 shows no effect. Sample 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on all crops except groundnut. Sample 2 shows resistance on all crops. Now we have something to go on. Groundnut appears to be the most susceptible to orange, at least affected by indigo. We may be close, and weeks before our deadline. September 7th, 1962, day 7. I think we had, may have our formula, hopefully be our final test. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows no effect. Sample 2 shows no effect. Sample 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on all crops. Sample 2 shows resistance on all crops. This is excellent. We have our product. Oh good, we've made a new biological weapon. Addendum. Jang was today's food runner, and after coming back, he said the air was so thick with Agent Orange that he could barely see, and that the majority of his delivery was contaminated in the process. We have to begin rationing our supplies. September 8th, 1962. Day 8. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1, Sample 2, and Sample 3 all show no effect. Plants. The control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 and 2 both show resistance on all crops. Well, this has confirmed our hopes. Agent Indigo is ready for deployment. We may as well start filling our barrel stock with indigo prematurely, since we have over three weeks left to spend down here before the escort arrives. Addendum. After the crew had gone to sleep, I went back to euthanize the mice. Two of the samples showed signs of minor aggression and irritation. I have no desire to report this, as it seems benign and should in no way halt our research. That's what people in the industry like to refer to as foreshadowing. We got rid of it. Promise. Yeah, should be safe. September 10th, 1962. Day 10. We have so much indigo crop left over from the experiments that we could have trouble finding something to use it for. It was the only crop that did not die in any of the tests. Since it is a dye, after all, we are now using it to stylize the barrels, like the Americans did with theirs. While none of us want to, we must still conduct experiments until at least the 15th, as per Lao Dong's orders. Dong. From now on, all further observations should be considered arbitrary. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1, 2, and 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies again after exposure. Sample 1 and 2 shows resistance on all crops. Addendum. While euthanizing the mice tonight, one of the bastards bit me on the finger. It was wiggling like a cat was chasing it as I plunged a needle into its fur. This piqued my interest. Could a delayed side effect be abnormal aggression? While it is insignificant compared to cancer, it is still something to consider. I shall be watching the subjects more closely from now on. September 13th, 1962. Day 13. We had an accident while packing the agent today. Fan had the idea to paint the barrel while it was already full, and it fell over and doused him in the chemical. We've hospitalized 
in case any unknown side effects present themselves. Although this is unlikely. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1, 2, and 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 and 2 both show resistance on all crops. Addendum. When I went to euthanize the mice tonight, Sample 2 was biting into the flesh of the control who had been killed just moments before I arrived. This is highly worrisome. I'm beginning to think the batch is tainted in some way. I will notify the staff tomorrow that we should produce another batch. September 14th, 1962. Day 14. News of the disturbing nature has just presented itself. Today was my day to collect supplies, and as soon as I stepped through the door, I could see what Jang had meant. Visibility is frighteningly low, almost as if the clouds had descended upon us. The situation became dire when I arrived at the crop site and found it had become overrun by Agent Orange. I returned as fast as I could to the base and relayed the news. Luckily, we had enough to last us two more weeks, which meant we should escape the fate of starvation, but only just. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows no effect. Sample 2, Sample 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 and 2. Resistance on all crops. Now that we have replaced the old batch with one taken from the sealed barrels, results should be more conclusive. Addendum. Tonight the mouse situation has become serious. All three mice were dead when I checked the cage, and their organs strewn about the floor. I assume there must have been a massive fight between the three in response to one or more turning aggressive. This means that aggression is a standard side effect which could potentially lead to murderous intentions. It is imperative that I keep a close eye on Fan and not to tell the others. Now it's starting to sound more like the T-Virus from Resident Evil or something. It's really cool to think about that, like, while all this is happening, there's some dude out there that's getting the idea to start a shrimp boat business. Force Gump. While all this serious <laughs> shit is happening, Force Gump is out there running with Bubba. I got September 15th, 1962, day 15. At last, the final test. Hopefully the side effects will go unnoticed by the rest of the crew. Mice, control shows no effect. Sample one shows aggression towards control. Sample two shows minor aggression towards control. Sample three shows no effect. Plants, control dies shortly after exposure. Sample one and two show resistance on all crops. This is not good. The experiment showed that our last four lab mice had an urge to induce violence on one another. Luckily, the staff agreed it was too late to change it and that it was already proven to prevent damage from orange. We're getting to the last of the barrels now and we still have indigo to spare. Addendum. I sincerely believe we are in trouble. We have separated the mice due to the danger of one killing another. And when euthanization time came, all three sample mice had quite literally imploded. Their organs and skeletons were hanging from the outside of their skin as if they had been turned inside out. I threw the mice corpses into the furnace and hoped that no one would question their disappearance. They tightened submersibled themselves. Yeah, that's really odd. What? Addendum. One of the soldiers taking shelter here came into contact with a batch tonight. He has been hospitalized now next to fam. September 22nd, 1962, day 22. Jang found one of the untouched corpses in the damn furnace. I informed him of the situation reluctantly, and fortunately he agreed to keep it quiet. We took the remaining mouse and applied some of the chemical. It was only 17 minutes before it began to convulse wildly, spewing blood out of its orifices. What we witnessed next was truly horrifying. It's a mouse. The mouse's you're... skeleton was forced out of both the mouth and anus, and the skin receded into its ears, eyes, and genitalia. Its muscles were clearly spasming out of control, forcing out anything inside the body that was not Agent Indigo. After the process was complete, we could see clearly that its veins were pumping the chemical rapidly, with its heart, lungs, kidneys, liver, and stomach were hanging by thin strands of flesh attached to the skeletal midsection. It was a disgusting sight, and we ordered the staff to quarantine Fan and the soldier. Considering the human inner workings are much larger than a mouse's, it should only be a few more days before it happens. I can barely sleep now, just thinking that this will occur to them. Addendum. It's approximately 2.45 in the morning, I can hear them moaning down the hall. I think it has begun. That was really graphic. Extremely graphic. The following is from a set of scribbled notes recovered from the bunker along with the log. Account of the conversion. The moaning is not stopping. I understand it should take longer for a human to turn compared to a mouse, but it has been over two hours now. It is 310. I can hear yelling from the quarantine zone. Oh God, I can hear them. I can hear their screams. The pain must be enduring. The screams are being muffled now. It must be close to the end of the process. Jang is in the room with me. He says Fan has turned, but he is still moving. How is that possible? The soldier has turned now. I can hear the shrieking. I plan to run with Jang to the storage room. It is the farthest place from the quarantine zone. We just heard glass breaking. One of the soldiers just came running into the room in a panic. He is dripping with sweat and blood, but he claims it is not his own. He claims that Fan and the other soldier are still very much alive. I am terrified. We are about to make the run to the storage room. Oh God, what have we done? As we were running down the hallway, I caught a glimpse of what used to be Fan. 
rolling onto the floor with his skin turned inside out. I could hear the soldier still attempting to scream from the quarantine zone. How are they still alive? Jiang just went out to try and salvage some rations from the refrigerator, which involves passing the quarantine zone. May God be with him. Oh my God, they knocked him down. How? How? Oh my god! I fear I may not live to see an end of the destruction of Agent Orange. What they did to Jang was disgusting. They enveloped him. I heard him screaming. The chemical pouring from their veins onto him. I remember him calling out one last phrase, choking on Agent Indigo. Kill the pain. We left him there, drowning. It is five o'clock. The rest of the staff is in here with us. We are huddling around each other, and all we can hear is the muffled moan of those things that used to be human. They are rolling their mangled bodies towards us. They just knocked a barrel over next to one of the soldiers. Indigo is all over the floor. The barrel. Oh my god. We were so stupid. It was the barrels. It was the damn barrels. Barrels! We made the same mistake the Americans made. Only this time, we may have endangered the lives of everyone in this country. Of course, the indigo plant fared so well. The indigo was a chemical agent of his own. The plant material fills some missing piece, which was introduced to organic matter. Expels it from the inside. The barrel material just accelerated the effects and the aggression. It just made it worse. My God is deliberately knocking over the barrels. They are all soaked. Everyone. I am the only one still clean. I have to go. Is it like a moving thing? It's not just like a gas? It sounds kind of like it's uh, like it's turning into the blob or something. Because at first this sounded like some T-virus stuff. Like this is 100% zombie. Yeah. There's another section here. It says October 2nd, 1962. Day 33. They lied. Lao Dong never sent backup. It has been a full day since the rescue was promised to arrive and I can assure that they are either dead or non-existent. North Vietnam will die because of this. I am currently at the exit. It's 8.45. I'm standing in the doorway, peening. Oh, sorry, peering around. That's not peening. I'm standing at the door. I'm peeing. peeing I thought this might be my last time to take a comfortable piss. I'm standing in the doorway, peering around. It is dawn, and the herbicide is everywhere. It persists even though the planes had stopped targeting this area days ago. I cannot see a thing. I can hear gunfire from all around the outpost, even though it is most likely miles away. It is still definitely but I can still hear them. Those things that used to be my colleagues. I hear them rolling about the facility, moaning softly as if to say, it's fine, come be with us. Death is certain, no matter where I go. Although, I think I would rather stay and face the hell inside this bunker than the hell that is going on out there. The pain endured by those things could never amount to the pain endured by the people of Vietnam who are forced to fight this war. If anyone finds this note, please destroy all that remains of Agent Indigo. The log and notes were discovered by American troops shortly prior to their withdrawal from the country. No trace of the alleged substance agent indigo was ever found no bodies were ever recovered it definitely sounds a lot like some resident evil stuff where except instead of them turning into zombies they turned into mashed potatoes that could also like speak and move around and stuff anytime it comes to like chemical weapons i'll pass like damn we were really experimenting during world war one when we started making up gases and stuff like that and they've totally messed up mustard gas is probably the one that caused the most damage just because it was a blister agent so it could touch your skin or soak into your uniform it would cause your skin to become inflamed and develop blisters all over it if you didn't get it washed off within like the first 30 45 minutes i actually go into a little bit more detail about what mustard gas is in a video i did about the battle of bella wood if you haven't seen that one yet i recommend going to the channel checking that one out because it goes into pretty deep detail about what mustard gas does to the human body and like how it was used in world war one anyway i hope you enjoyed this spooky creepy pasta but anyway this story was written by knock tevoir anyway let me know what you thought about the story in the comments and also what would you do in that situation if you had to volunteer to be be part of a science experiment like that that was developing chemical weapons would you want to do that i think if you do want to do this then you should definitely tell your therapist anyway thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video bye bye, bye, -bye. <laughs>